This is Regan Wellness Podcast with Jamie Logie, episode 165. What are new tropics? Can I do that? Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jamie Logie. I run RegainWellness.com. And this is Regan Wellness Podcast of the same name. So thanks for coming on out today. If you're new, uh, listening for the first time, extra special welcome. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. That way I don't have to worry about getting the show to you. It magically appears by the work of the internet fairies directly to your listening device of choice. So whether it's Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitch Radio, wherever you get podcasts, it should be there. So the, you might not have ever heard of new tropics before, and it's relative it's – it's sort of – relatively new, even though they've obviously been around for a long time. These are just different um, chemical structures and natural things that uh, can have positive uh, impacts on your brain, memory, learning. I mean, caffeine is considered a nootropic. I'll get into the whole thing. So it, it's become a lot more prominent, and I'm seeing a lot more of these products pop up. You might have, if you haven't, uh, you hopefully learned some stuff all about these today and what goes behind it. Um, what the information says, um, I'll just get you up to speed with, I think like at the moment, a relevant, a relevant thing as more of these products are hitting the shelves and you might see them, you know, in magazine articles or, uh, online articles or whatever. So just to give you a little bit more information. Okay, let's do this. Okay. So just right off the bat, the word new tropics, uh, it's not, it's not the Flint tropics, like from semi pro it's the uh, it's spelt n o o t r o p i c s just in case that was this a little misleading so this is just going to be a breakdown of it all so like i said a nootropic is a substance or a supplement or you know natural chemical or whatever um or uh, any other cognitive enhancer that improves your memory your focus creativity motivation, all that sort of things. And um, they're basically cognitive enhancers that people use to improve their own cognitive function, whether it be athletes or creative people or CEOs or, or whatever. So I'll kind of break it down as, as much as possible. So basically, with, like if you've seen these in supplement form, they're, they're pretty much, they're 100% natural. They come from natural sources. They don't have side effects. Um, as opposed to say like what they call smart drugs, you know, like Adderall's and things like that. Um, they give you that extra performance boost. They can have, some, you know, long-term positive effects on your brain. Um, again, just as it goes without saying, I'm not endorsing or pushing anything at all here. Just trying to give you all the information. So take it as sort of a jumping off standpoint um, and, and just learn from there. So they're, like I said, they're, they're things to help people, enhanced brain function. And then when you combine that with good, you know, daily physical activity, good sleep, good diet, you know, uh, keeping stress low, uh, removing yourself from like toxins and toxic environments and decreasing things like, you know, blue light and everything like that, it, they can work hand in hand and in conjunction. So you see, you know, professionals, managers, CEOs do it. Um, athletes, students, anyone who needs just sort of that mental clarity and mental focus. So they're not something that will increase your IQ. Uh, they're not going to improve any healthy eating, anything like that. They're not, you know, you don't just like pop them like a quick, like caffeine hit as a, as a boost, you know, it, it's not that sort of thing. So looking at some of the things they can do, and we're looking at from a standpoint of you know, cognitive function and improvement and production and everything. So first, you know, they increase productivity and motivation and the new tropics. So I'll go through some of the different ones. Like if you ever see these in a supplement form, it's a blend of a diff a bunch of different natural things that work together. But uh, in, you know, so new tropics can be one thing. It can be five things. It can be a bunch. But then new tropics in general can trigger your motivation, increase your focus, uh, they can improve your mood and, you know, those things can, you know, help in overall productivity. So it's why a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs and CEOs and people use them, improves your focus and your memory. Um, they, they can really actually directly influence your memory, your focus and your attention, which then, you know, that's going to help improve your result in whatever field you're in. And 
a lot of people who've reported severe memory issues before taking um, nootropics have found improvements in it. Um, it. They can help improve your mood and well-being. They can decrease anxiety, make you feel more relaxed, uh, mood boost, stuff like that, make your day better. They can improve your sleep. Obviously, I've, I've covered sleep so much on this show. And, you know, millions and millions of people have massive sleep issues. And it's really having a bad, bad spillover into their everyday lives. So with these nootropics, they um, can improve the quality of your sleep. It's not a sleeping pill. It's nothing like that. But it's going to help in your overall sleep. And then obviously like supporting your brain health. And due to things like severe stress, terrible food, alcohol, um, toxins in the environment, a million other factors are, are creating such a level of brain-related sickness. sickness and, and nootropics can be a way to remedy that and support your brain health. So let's look at the different actual specific things, um, ingredients, I guess we'll call them. Uh, like I said, you can have one nootropic on its own, um, like ginkgo biloba or a, a stack of them together. So let's look at the different um, effects people are looking for, or basically like results that can come and w which ones are involved with that. So that first one with improving your memory. So there, there are three types of memory. There's your sensory memory, which basically, you know, is from newborn to around one year old, your short term memory, which is at its best up till your your 60s, and then your long term memory, which can be, you know, lifetime memory. So different nootropics can help to improve your short term and your long term memory. Um, so it's, you know, people, you know, their their motivation for taking these things is just whether it's, you know, day to day use like that, or for people who it's like, you know, they have to have a lot of information always at their disposal and, and available in their minds, you know, that short term memory can be, you know, I don't know, can be a, a life affecting thing as far as if it's career wise, or if there's money involved. Um, so a few of the things that are relevant with your improvement of memory are going to be ingredients like uh, CD choline. Um, it's, it's a nootropic. It's used for treating memory impairments. It's being used as a memory enhancer and a supplement for some people for alertness. And then there's things like alpha GPC. And it's another, uh, it, it, so like that first, that acetylcholine is, is an ingredient that's called a choline. And alpha GPC is another one of those things that's used by younger people for improving their memory, but by older people to help decrease their cognitive decline. And a lot of athletes actually use alpha GPC and it can help enhance like power output and performance and stuff like that. Um, another ingredient, I mentioned the ginkgo biloba that more people are probably familiar with a nootropic in this form. It's super popular. You can find them anywhere any health food store, even grocery stores, like in supplement aisles. And it's basically, it's a herb and it's used to improve cognitive performance. It's been, again, used by older people for decreasing cognitive decline. Um, it, it's, it works in younger people for a memory booster. Uh, it, it's been really one of the top used herbs as far as its, uh, you know, health benefits and then performance and in, like, as in this case, like memory. Then we've got another herb that you probably don't know of. It's called Bacoba monieri. And it's it's used again. It's like ginkgo biloba. It's used as a memory booster. It can improve cognition, can decrease anxiety. So, you know, sometimes when you see these nootropic uh, formulas and combinations, it's in there as far as that, its ability to do that. It, it looks kind of like... Uh, Looks like watercress, if you've ever seen that before. Almost like arugula, more like watercress, though. Um, uh, after that, let's look at the effects of improved cognition. And your cognition is its sort of like a, a blanket term that includes all of these different things, like your knowledge, your attention, your memory, your judgment, uh, how you evaluate things, how you reason things, problem solving your ability to make decisions, comprehension, that's all under cognition. And all these things are obviously 
super important. And, but it's a lot of things going on at once. So, you know, think of your, your cognition and your brain is like a processor. And if you can have a faster processor in your head, it gives you a real advantage in all these different things, like your judgment, your reasoning, problem solving, whether that's in school or work or, or whatever, there, there's a ton of these things that are important to day-to-day life. So some of the nootropics, the herbs, the ingredients, chemicals or whatever that help with cognition, going to be a few weird things here. One is taro still bean. And it's a, it's a molecule that is used as a cognitive booster. And you see these in some different um, formulations because it also seem to have the ability to reduce cholesterol and glucose. And so, but in, in, in conjunction with that, it's also seen to have some of these um, cognitive um, enhancing effects to it. The, another one is a mushroom called lion's mane mushroom. And again, another cognitive enhancer. And it's used for all, like it's, it's seen to be effective for all those different processes I mentioned before, like the problem solving, um, everything like that. Next one, which if you're involved in fitness and stuff, you probably know of is creatine. And creatine is super popular uh, in athletics, in strength training. It's able to help you work past, you know, sort of whatever threshold you have. It gives you more muscle energy. If you remember like your, if you remember back to biology and like your ATP and when they're um, basically exhausted, it turned to ADP and creatine gives it that other molecule. So it's back to ATP. So you have more muscle energy. It basically means you can do um, higher intensity things a bit longer. So that means it, like for sprinting or uh, strength training or something that takes like explosive action. Whereas you'd say would be normally able to sprint all out for like 25 seconds or whatever. Creatine helps you kind of like push past that and that so that can improve strength and um, fitness and muscle building and everything like that. So, but it's also seen to improve and support cellular function. And there's research showing that supplementing creatine improves um, not only that, you know, all that physical performance stuff, but it really improves um, helping in cognitive demanding tasks. So all those things we mentioned before, you know, problem solving, reasoning, all that stuff. It, it just, it's supposed to be a good brain enhancer. Um, so then you got a few things that are involved with not just that cognition, but then also, you know, improving memory and also working with attention too. So some of these things tougher to pronounce, we're looking into stuff called like uh, phosphotidylserine and it's an ingredient and it's vital for cognitive function. Our body naturally actually synthesizes this stuff, but adding it in as a supplement shows some real positive effects, especially for memory, but also for your like cognitive capability. So again, like we're looking at all these like natural things that either come from herbs or, you, you know, your, your body partly making, but you can supplement in, in different forms that have these capabilities, which is pretty amazing. So next one's a, um, uh, L tyrosine, and that's just a normal amino acid, which you probably, you probably aware of amino acids and they're the building blocks of protein, but all the specific one. So tyrosine is an amino acid which um, really appears to improve your cognition during really like more stress-based time. So if you're, um, you know, if, if, I don't know, things are like more relaxed or whatever, it doesn't seem to have as big an impact as it does when you're going through like real acute stressors. And there's research showing that the tyrosine will improve your working memory and your well-being. So good for people who are, I don't know, if you're facing real demands and time crunches and time restraints and stuff like that, it seemed to have um, a real effect there. Next one you've probably heard of, and that's rhodiola rosea. And so that's another herb. It's uh, kind of looks it's like a little greenish plant with like yellow, kind of looks like a dandelion sort of like yellow, little yellow bud things. Really popular in Chinese medicine. Uh, like the ginkgo biloba or ginseng or whatever. And because it's got, uh, appears to have some several benefits, it can improve functioning in people who uh, have real fatigue issues and it can really help reduce that fatigue. 
it's seen to maybe promote longevity. I mean, there's, there's a ton of different studies as have been sort of going through all this research and looking at it. There's a lot of studies linked up. They don't mean these are a thousand percent conclusive because there's a lot of other factors and variables that go into it. But it's just interesting that some, you know, these things are showing at least some of these um, results and promise. Then we've got another ingredient called vinpocetine and it's an alkaloid. It's derived from, if you've ever heard of the periwinkle plant, it comes from that. And it's, again, it's, if you're familiar with herbs and natural medicines, you probably know it's a very popular nootropic because of those cognitive effects it has. And it's also seen to increase blood flow to the brain. And that's important and whatever, not tougher to find and things like that. But if, again, like if you're more exposed to these sort of things, you've probably seen it. The next one that's super important and everyone knows, and you're probably already using is just regular fish oil, omega threes and fish oils usually, well, it should be combined of the two omega three fatty acids, EPA and DHA. And I think everyone is pretty aware. Like I said, you know nootropics, you just might not know them as nootropics with omega-3s being one of them. And, you know, always pe- people always talk about fish as brain food and all that sort of thing. And it's because of those omega-3s in there, especially the EPA and the DHA. And they have those positive cognitive effects in the brain. Um, it, it increases brain activity. Probably, you know, if we're talking supplements, probably, you know, if I had to narrow them down to a couple that are the most important, it's probably right up there with maybe like a probiotic, uh, maybe a multivitamin and whatever. And so you're looking at the ability to kind of combat cognitive decline and Alzheimer's and um, dementia and stuff like that. And it's because these are like your brain, the majority of your brain is made up of those omega-3 fats. Like you, you're a fat head essentially. And primarily, you know, like I said, the EPA and the DHA and the, a lot of times people who have shown to have these cognitive issues or depression and they show very low levels of omega-3, so supplementing can be good. And, I mean, like you can obviously get them from natural sources, like especially if you can get like real um, wild natural salmon, whatever good grass-fed beef is a you know grass-fed hormone free grass finished like the real real natural pasteurized animals uh, have super high levels of omega-3 compared to their counterpoint in grocery stores like you know crappy factory confinement lot based animals which are essentially you know borderline just being poison destroying the environment they're you know just bad news all around that is not the same as a naturally raised, like I said, pasteurized, organic animal. It, it's almost like they're two different species, and that's a whole other issue. If you want to, I've got a lot more on all this. If you want to listen to some more in-depth stuff on, uh, you know, like grass-fed beef and omega threes and everything like that, so I recommend listening to those episodes. So I'll link those all up. If you go to the show notes for this episode, so that would be regainwellness.com slash one six five. I'll link up some of those other shows if you want to get more in depth with all this uh you know the omegas and the fish oils and grass fed and brain health and all that stuff. But essentially in the case here with nootropics with omega threes, you're looking at overall really strong cognitive um effects from it. Okay, next we've got good old vitamin B12. And again, something you know of, you've probably taken as well too. And you might not even be sure why. It, it, it's a vitamin that's you know primarily used for energy, vitality, but it's also seen to improve mood, concentration, uh, mental function. And honestly, it's got like a dozen other benefits, not, you know, not even related to cognition. It, it, it's such a well-rounded thing. So something like if you take a multivitamin, it's probably in that you might already be taking a B12 on its own. So uh, another very powerful and important nootropic. Okay. So now if we're looking at combinations of, or, or certain nootropics that help with things like alertness, focus, calm, we've got ingredients. I just like to say ingredients. It's sort of an easier way to classify all these things. We've got another amino acid and that's theanine. And it's, you, you've probably seen this and you're not sure why, but it's found in green tea. So people who, you know, like green tea, they know it's kind of like a relaxing um, thing, kind of a relaxing agent. And people 
use it. You can supplement on its own, this theanine by itself, just to reduce stress, but it also like increases alertness. But you know, if you have it in green tea, you might like that soothe and calming effect. Um, and then interestingly, it's why it's good in green tea is because if you combine it with caffeine, that is seen to be a very popular and effective way to boost your cognition. And caffeine has this ability, but when caffeine's combined with a the theanine, it's even better. So green tea drinkers out there rejoice. And I think it's something everyone could probably be having. And because green tea as well has a ton of antioxidants in it and has actually one cup of green tea has more vitamin C than an orange does. So it's an all around green tea to me is like one of the ultimate health drinks. So something you should be looking into, even if you like hate tea, I personally don't like tea more. I just, I don't like hot beverages. Like I don't, like coffee or hot chocolate or anything. It's just something about that hot. But if you take, make your own like chill green tea, put it over ice. Um, even if you want to like sweeten it up a bit or even put like a touch of cinnamon or a touch of honey. But if you put it, if you put it over ice and squeeze some lemon in, it's super refreshing. And that's a good way. That's what I do personally. That's the way I like to consume it when I do, just cause I'm not a hot tea guy. Uh, even though I'm English and grew up in England. So I've been outcast by the entire country for not drinking tea, but yeah, keep with the green tea. Okay. So I I just touched on caffeine. Let's just quickly a little more. That's going to be the most widely used nootropic there is hands down and probably the most used caffeine is a a drug. It's a psychoactive drug because it is, you know, I did, I did a show on cannabis and we were talking about other things that affect your brain and we call those psychoactive and caffeine is right there. Not, you know, it's a little more mild depending on how much you drink. If you're knocking back like 10 espressos a day, you might be looking into some issues, but people don't know this as a nootropic, but it's the most popular nootropic there is. So with caffeine, obviously we're looking at alertness, but people aren't always aware that it has memory boosting effects. So it's clearly obviously a very powerful stimulant provides mental stimulation, but um, it, it's there and available in your bloodstream and, and it crosses that um, blood brain th- barrier and the threshold and all that sort of stuff to help improve memory. Uh, it also has a lot of connections to athletic performance, physical strength, stuff like that. Well documented. The big thing here though is uh, so like dosage wise, it's seen to be effective is around 100 to 200 milligrams a day. That's around, you know, one to two black coffees. So you want to be caffeine's a whole big thing on its own. Um, you know, with coffees, black coffee is awesome, especially the fresher you can get, the better. There's so many health benefits now that we're finding from black coffee, uh, especially, you know, like antioxidant content, its ability to combat heart disease, lower cholesterol, improve mood, all that sort of stuff. But you want to, the fresher you can get it, the better. So if you can grind your own beans, you know, use something like a fresh press, fresh press, French press, it's going to be a bit better. Even if you already have already ground coffee, still good. Even like instant coffee still seem to be including a lot of those health benefits. It's a little lower on the antioxidant content, but still effective. You just want to be careful with the coffees that you don't load these things up with so much like sugar and milk and creamers and sweeteners that they become a dessert more than the coffee. And one other thing that I've been looking at recently with coffee is the fact that, uh, and it gets back to that hot beverage issue that I don't like. When you, and obviously most people are drinking hot coffee. The one issue though is when you um, put this boiling water through coffee grounds, it can really increase the amount of acid that goes into the coffee because it's just passing straight through and all the oils from the beans uh, or from the ground coffee, they're going into the actual coffee. And these oils give it that bitterness. So when you when you taste bitter coffee, it's because of that. And the acidity can be um, tough on people, stomach discomfort and whatever. So they're finding that cold brewed coffee um, coffee is a bit better the way to go the problem is it takes a little longer um and in like in a store or whatever it might be a bit more expensive and but it reduces almost by 70 percent the amount of acid that's in the coffee so a lot more a lot gentler on the stomach seem to maybe even preserve some of the uh 
nutrients that come through it and, and, and keep the antioxidant high. You're, you're still getting them, though, from normal black coffee. It's not like it's degrading them. But if you've had problems um, as far as stomach issues and whatever, it's probably because of the amount of oils that have come through the coffee beans. So it's super easy to make yourself as far as cold brewing it. All you do is take the amount of it's, you know ground coffee. I forget what the ratios are, ratios are, but I think it's like one cup of ground coffee to around five, four to five cups of water. And basically you just, um, you throw a cup, like say you have one cup of the coffee, the ground coffee, put it in a big container. You throw in maybe two of the cups of water, stir it up and let it steep for a little bit for maybe like five minutes. Then you're going to pour the rest of the water in, seal it in, and you're going to put it in, ideally in your fridge, from anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to make like true cold brewed coffee. Then when you take it out, you're going to want to strain it into a pot through like a mesh strainer, but not squeeze the coffee beans. I know people are like sort of tempted to do that. That All the oils are in there. That's what's causing all that acidity. That's really um, not ideal for your body. So if you've got your like whatever storage thing you're putting it in, you're pouring everything through the strainer, let it all drain like a minute or two, but don't press the coffee beans. Then you're going to get rid of the coffee beans, toss them out. There's one more step to make this the cleanest brewed stuff in the world. You're going to take like a normal coffee filter. And if you can wet it, that's going to help um, with how the coffee passes through it and keep it more intact. When it's a little dry, uh, some of the liquid absorbs into the coffee filter and you want it to pass through. So if you wet this thing, wring it out, and then put it into you know whatever you're going to pour through to store it into. So it's going to take around like five minutes to, for it all to filter. And you might have to like pour it in stages. But when it's done filtering through, you're going to be left in the coffee filter kind of like a little bit of a black smudge. It's going to lo- look a little bit like oil. And again, that's what it is. It is actually all those oils that have not gone through that are removing there's really nothing super beneficial in them you want all that liquid that has all that great um content and antioxidant content and and health benefits and everything in it so honestly when you take this stuff out the coffee is and i don't even like coffee it's so much it's such a smooth drink you taste more of all those natural undertones depending where the coffee comes from or where it was grown, uh, like a bit more, maybe like a fruity taste. You get more of that chocolatey sense and it's so smooth and no bitterness. You cannot believe what you're drinking. So a little more labor intensive, but the healthiest, absolute healthiest way to make this stuff. Okay. Let's look at the new tropics that will boost your immune system. So obviously the stronger your immune system, uh, the better your cognitive performance. You're not breaking down, getting weak. If you notice like whenever you're getting sicker, you have trouble focusing and concentrating. It's it's because that your, your immune system taking such a hit that your whole, your whole body and your brain suffers for it. So the new tropics that will boost, uh, your immune system, you know, all of these already. So first one, vitamin C, probably the most essential vitamin because it's primarily like people forget it's a huge antioxidant source. Obviously it reduces symptoms of cold and can even help prevent cold in the first place. A good amount each day, you know, a uh, hundred to 200 milligrams to support your immune system. When you start, if you're getting sick or are sick, that's when you can boost up the dosage. Um, I like to just blast my body with it. I like to, you know, combine things like that and zinc, garlic, echinacea, whatever. So when you're sick, your body can take a little more, but it's better to spread it out through the day. You probably don't want to do more than, I don't know, it depends who you talk to, you know, 500 milligrams at a time, but you can uh, spread that over the course of the day. Next one that is an immune system booster, vitamin D. Crucial for our survival, vitamin D, Uh, but also supported, or sorry, associated with different benefits. Uh, right at the top being improved cognition, but another big immune health booster and your overall well-being. And then there's, you know, bone health and eye health and all that sort of stuff. And if depending on what climate you live in and what part of the world, vitamin D is a huge issue because we obviously get it from the sun. It's synthesized through our skin. It's not actually even a vitamin. It's technically a hormone because of how how it's synthesized. 
But when you live in northern hemisphere areas and when we get into what is it now? We're getting into late October. When we start heading into that winter time, our sun exposure goes way down, not only because of the distance that the earth is from the sun, but the position of where we are on the earth and just the fact that you're not outside that much. It's, you know, when it's, it can be sunny and nice, but if it's freezing cold, you're outside for like five minutes at a time. So we just don't get that sun exposure. So for people who live in these climates, like where I am, like part of the North through Canada, through England, Ireland, Sweden, Finland, all those Northern areas, vitamin D supplementation can be very important to help uh, for, you know, your immune system, your sense of well being. So, you know, Standard dosages, it's measured in what they call UIs, international units. Standard dosages is between 1,000 to 2,000 of these UIs a day. Um, you know, in the summer might not be an issue. Something, again, you want to look into more or talk to your doctor about if you notice through the winter uh, all these issues, you're getting sick more. There's a lot of other reasons for all this stuff, but vitamin D just takes a massive hit, and you're probably well aware of this depending on where you live. Next nootropic is something most people don't know about, but they know of it. It's vitamin K. And it is an essential vitamin, but it's kind of had a different, they've been related with uh, blood clotting and things like that. And there's been uh, where it's had to be prescribed and, you know, just again, depending where you live and what's available, but it's, it is a vitamin and it plays a major role in your cardiovascular health and your bone health. And so it's not, technically related to the immune system like the other ones, but it goes along well with vitamin D. And when they're both taken together, the effects of each can be improved. So, sorry, improved. And so if you look at a multivitamin, that's a good, good multivitamin has all these different things in a good balance because they complement each other. Okay, a few more things of the nootropics to look at so you can know a little bit more about them are the nootropics that reduce anxiety and improve sleep. And I'll just say, go check out on my show notes. So regainwellness.com slash one six five. That's the only information for this show. And I'll link up a few of the multiple shows I've done on the importance of sleep and experts I've interviewed on it. And I won't go into it all now because it's such a big topic, but probably the most important thing people always say like, What's the, the, people always want like a magic bullet. Like they want the secret to health and wellness and they want the quick solution. And you always think, oh, there's never something that can sum that all up. But it act to they're me, to me it is, and it's sleep. If I could say one word that can improve everything in your life, it's better sleep. So check those shows out to learn why it's so important, what happens when you don't get good sleep and how to get better sleep. I've got, I've even got shows where I talk about like, the best pillows to sleep. Like I cover everything. So regainwellness.com slash one six five, you'll see everything. Okay, first new tropic on the list that you I'm sure you know of is melatonin. So melatonin is a hormone in the brain which regulates your sleep and your circadian rhythms and everything like that. And it's probably, you know, the most important nootropic in regards for sleep and insomnia. It's also, you probably know that it can help combat jet lag or people who do shift work uh, because of that, your circadian rhythm getting out of whack and all that stuff. And we get, we don't, it, melatonin is naturally secreted by darkness. Uh, so when, you know, if you're thinking us in more of a, a primitive state, we wouldn't have exposure to all this like artificial light, which is basically 24 seven. And you know, as the sun would go down, it would get darker. Our only light exposure would probably be just like candlelight, firelight, whatever. Very minimal, softer glowing, everything like that. But now with all our modern lighting and technology and um, screens and whatever, we get exposed to so much blue light, which basically prevents the secretion of that, which is really throwing off a lot of people's sleep and your circadian rhythms because your brain essentially thinks you're alert all the time or else why wouldn't you be sleeping? So it is important to like reduce the use of, um, you know, screens and TVs and whatever, at least an hour before bed. At the very least, there's steps though you can take now, like say with your iPhone, there's the night shift mode, which gives things more of a, like a reddish glow. So it takes that blue light out of it. If you're using like your computer or laptop, there's a program called Flux, F dot L U X. And again, it takes that blue light out, gives it more of a natural glow on your TV. You can set it to movie mode, which gives it more again, like a dimmer look. 
ideally like you're not staring at a screen like an inch from your face till two in the morning but if you have to be using these things at least engage these features to make it better on your body um so but with melatonin obviously good for that also a powerful antioxidant people don't always give it credit to but i'm giving it credit melatonin i got you Okay, next one, glycine. So another amino acid and a neurotransmitter that can help. When we talk neurotransmitters, um, things with effect in the brains, and in the case of glycine, it can improve your sleep quality. Magnesium, probably the most underused mineral in the body and one of the most important because it's in, magnesium is involved in like over 300 different processes in the body from Everything from like you blinking to blood flow to muscle contraction, like so much stuff is related to magnesium. And so many people are deficient in it because so many people aren't eating fresh things like dark green leafy vegetables, nuts and seeds, raw, you know, raw stuff like that. Um, you get it from like dark chocolate, um, you know, just people are, are, are so low in it. So uh, I, ideally you can get these natural things into your diet. But supplementing it with with supplementing yourself with magnesium is going to be important. So, and and in our topic here today, it's going to help decrease blood pressure. So that's going to have a bunch of positive benefits. It also seems to improve relaxation and sleep. Um, so that's going to help enhance cognitive function. So it's not you know necessarily that they're directly related to cognitive function. Some of these nootropics I'm talking about, but they are involved with the processes that help improve it. Okay, next one is another herb called ashwagandha. Not from Black Panther. This is an adaptogen herb, and it's used to prevent anxiety. You might have seen it. Again, I've, I've noticed this one getting a little more popular and starting to pop up in different places. It's primarily used to relieve, um, re- relief of insomnia and depression. And also seen to reduce cortisol, a stress hormone, which throws the entire body out of whack. And, you know, altogether, basically kind of a calming effect, but, you know, ideally it helps to to prevent anxiety. Okay, so that's basically all the different nootropics and all the different roles and functions they can play. Like I said, some are more memory-based, some are more um, calming-based or anxiety-combating based or memory, you know, learning all that sort of stuff. So like, I just wanted to cover this whole thing because like I said, if you start to see these, you know, new tropics come up either articles or you see the supplement and you're wondering what it is, this has hopefully got you up to speed with things that you already knew, but didn't know, you know, that they were classified as a new tropic. So again, you can buy these in supplement form in different stacks and different combinations. I'm not recommending anything or promoting anything. I'm just trying to give you all the information and what is basically the the science and the mindset that goes behind uh, products like this or just them in general. So whether you're, you know, if you're taking just a vitamin C supplement on your own, you're essentially taking a nootropic, but good to get a little more insight on some of these things that you you might not have known or heard of or how they work together and all that sort of stuff. So that's, that's sort of, you know, the main intent of this show is the jumping off point to getting up to speed with some of these things. And then, you know, continuing to do your own research or, you know, consulting with your doctor and and bringing information. So, you know, as, as as well equipped as you can be in anything related, you know, nutrition, fitness, health, the better you are to make the best decision that applies to you. So I will cut it off there. Thank you for listening again. All those different episodes I talked about on the show notes, regainwellness.com slash one six five. While you're there, if you want to check out my other I've got some other um, guides and books. You can see that under regainwellness.com slash books. And if you want to sign up for the email newsletter, there's a free ebook I send when you sign up. And it's a quick breakdown on, you know, foods you want to be avoiding, foods you want to include. It's got some recipes. It's all there in one shot. And you can get that by signing up at regainwellness.com slash guide. Okay, that's enough out of me. Thanks for listening. See you soon.